I've always wanted to model a treasure chest and uh, now I have and I'm going to show you how I did it and I'll probably make a few changes along the way a couple of things that I think I could do better but um, it's 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 pretty easy to do but it does use a bunch of um, techniques that would be necessary I think necessary for people to do more complicated more advanced models so if you're a relative beginner and you want to try something kind of easy it's kind of fun to do and looks like a little sort of toy uh, treasure chest then you know check this out it doesn't open up all right it's not hollow inside uh, you could do that or I could do one like that if you wanted me to but uh, in the meantime uh, we'll just uh, we'll just have a go at this make sure I'm recording all right so uh, yes let's let's uh, let's give it a try I'll keep that open as a reference image so I'm just over here in blender in the typical startup scene I've switched to cycles render so I can use my GPU compute and my screencast keys are on or not on well they are now okay they are now okay so uh, here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna basically delete everything and I'm gonna hit one on the number pad and five so I'm looking front ortho view so straight at the thing I'm gonna go shift a to add mesh cylinder I'm just gonna keep all the default values for now uh, but I want this line on its side so I'm gonna rotate Y R Y 90 like that okay and I'll try scaling this out in the, in the actual try that see what that size is is like let's turn off the grid flow grid floor and display grid floor and let's switch right away to a nice sh a nice shader that we like a matte top I usually go with that one okay so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna start making the top all right so we're gonna hit three to look at side view we're gonna go into edit mode and uh, I've got this uh, thing turned on in my preferences uh, this pie menu but you could obviously do it down here all right not that that all right so I also want to hit Z and go into wireframe so uh, I can see right right through the thing and uh, I'm going to hit B to box select and I'm going to select all of these bottom vertices leaving the ones that are sort of on the ground essentially okay I'm going to hit X vertices and delete them I'm going to turn my view a little bit and I'm going to go into edge selection and I'm going to select this bottom edge and this bottom edge and F to make a face and deselect. Then I'm going to shift alt and click this edge and that's going to get that all the way around and this and I'm going to have to make a face. And shift alt and click that and F to make a face. All right, back in the front view and let's have a look at this. That might be a little bit long now that I think about it. So I'm going to select it all and I'm going to scale in the X. And just arbitrarily bring it to that side <coughs> okay let's come back out and I think I did a bit of scaling in object mode so I'm gonna go control a um, rotation and scale and that's gonna reinitialize my scale up here to one all right so uh, you just have to do that periodically all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into edit mode again it doesn't matter the orientation you're looking at Hover my mouse over here and I'm going to go control R and I'm going to roll my mouse, up, mouse wheel up so we have two of these and accept. Make sure I am in medium point which is where it starts anyhow in Blender just in case you switched it. I'm going to go scale in the axis and I'm going to pull these out and what I'm doing is I'm setting up to make those side parts these things here so I want to figure out the approximate thickness of those that I would want and that looks fine to me. So I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to switch over to face selection and I'm going to shift alt and click here and that's going to get the whole row of them and shift alt and click over there and that's going to get the whole row of those. <coughs> I'm now going to copy that shift D and accept and then go P and accept that first selection to um, make these objects of their own aside away from the cylinder so we'll go back in object mode. So I've got the cylinder itself, and I've got these, all right, separated. <clears throat> I'm going to come back into edit mode, and I'm going to select this bottom face of this new stuff that I made, and I'm going to X 
delete those faces. Okay, so I just have that. Okay, perfect. Now, back in edit mode, I'm gonna A to select those, and I'm gonna hit E to uh, extrude, and then I'm gonna go Alt S, and I'm gonna pull with my mouse, and make these go up like that. All right, now I want them to go up relatively high because I'm gonna be putting wood paneling around here that's gonna take up some of the height and I want them to stick through like this. See, I, I don't like how they are so close to the wood. That's supposed to be wood, by the way. I, do, I would have liked them a little bit higher, but I didn't really think about that as much as I should have. So um, I'm gonna do that and um, that's fine and then I'm gonna select them at all and I'm gonna go scale in the X and I'm gonna move them out pulling outwards so that they also extend a decent amount over the edges here because I'm gonna put wood paneling on these sides as well and I'm moving them uh, equally all right so let's let's go with that for now I think that that's gonna look okay save our work and let's now also, I guess we're going to add a subdivision surface to these. So the wrench icon, add modifier, subdivision surface of 2, change the view to 2. And now um, i got to do some work on these. So go back into edit mode and hover your mouse over here. And I'm going to roll my mouse up. I'm going to go control R and roll my mouse up 1 and click to accept. And then I'm going to scale in the axis. I'm going to pull those out equally like that. Not right to the very end. Do the same over on this guy. Control R, roll my mouse up once, accept, scale in the X, whoops, and pull them out. And then we're gonna go back into object mode and we're gonna look and see where else we need to do one. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and do that on the side, but I'll just individually put one in. So Control R, click, pull up. Control R, click, and pull down. And let's see what we need on this one here. Control R, pull up. Control R, pull down. That should be fine for those. We can hit smoothing if we want to make them nice and smooth. Okay, so there is there's that stuff. <clears throat> now what I think I'll do is select the main cylinder part and uh, go into edit mode and. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to take these edges here, X and dissolve edges. We're not going to need them, although I am going to want one of these in a bit. You'll see what I mean by that. But I'm going to take this face and I am going to use it to make um, to make this part. All right, but I don't want to do it as the same object. So I'm going to go Shift D to copy it, P and Enter to make it a new object of its own. So there it is. Set origin to geometry. Make sure it's there. I'm just going to pull it down a little bit and I'll go into edit mode. We'll select it. I'll look in 7 top view. Mm, that's going to be hard to see. Try wireframe. And I'm going to, um, I'm just going to globally scale this and see if it scales out equally. I'm back in solid view. That's good enough for the moment. I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm just going to pull it down a ways. And I see we do have some extra edges in there. So let's see if we can uh, do something with these. All right, let's go to face selection. Should be one. Select it all just to make sure and remove doubles. Now, okay, everything's fine with that. All right, I'm just going to pull it up. That's not going to be big enough, so we're going to do some more work on that. In fact, I think I'll start with that now because that'll help me with laying down the wood panels. So I'm going to go back into edit mode and select it. And I'm going to s scale this in the Y, pull out till it's past these things, these things here. I'm going to scale it in the X. And I'm going to look in top view. And I want it to be, you know, relatively equal on this side and on this side. So there, there, and there. And that's okay for the moment because all of this can be adjusted. I just want this piece uh, here. I'm going to bring it right up so that these are flush against it. 
and that's that's okay for the time being all right so we're gonna go ahead and make the wood paneling this is a neat technique uh, sometimes it's a little weird but it should be very simple so we're going to edit mode uh, of the cylinder and I am going to in edge selection I'm gonna shift alt and click that edge all right want to keep that I want to go shift D P to make it a new object and come back into object mode and then select that Let's do origin to geometry. So we've got that piece in front view. I'm just gonna move this right to the middle. It's a lot easier to use uh, there. Now, I'm gonna turn this um, edge into a curve. So I'm gonna go Alt-C, curve, and now this icon shows up. That's all I need to do with it though right now. Now it might be a good idea to name this something like just call it curve. I don't need it to, you know, for very long. All right, just so I can, I've got it labeled and named. All right, I'm going to hide some stuff. Click on it and go H, even the cylinder H and even these H. I just want to see, there's my curve and it follows exactly the shape or profile of that cylinder top. My 3D cursor, I have not moved it. It's still right in the center of the stage. All right, and that's great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Shift A, and I am going to bring in a plane. It's going to show up right down there. It's in the right orientation. If I scale in the Y, imagine this is a piece of wood that's going to be, you know, curved along the top. <clears throat> I'm not going to play with the length right now. Um, it's a little bit trial and error. I'm just going to go with that. As, as my sort of width of the board would. Now the thing is, I'm gonna have a number of these pieces going around the curve, so they're gonna to have to bend. In order to bend these, I need to put some geometry in them. I need to put a bunch of edge loops in. I'll show you what I mean. Go into edit mode, and you know, I can look down in any dimension that I want. Now you don't see the curve there, not that you would need to, so I'll just go back to this. I'm gonna go Control R, I want these lengthwise and I don't know how many I need. I'm just going to scroll my mouse wheel up and I'm going to do something like that. All right, just like that. Now I'm going to select it all and I want to give it a little bit of thickness. So I'm going to go heat extrude and I'm going to pull up. I don't want it too thick. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. All right. All right. I'm going to go back into object mode and because I've scaled it, um, I'm going to go control A, rotation and scale. Now I'm going to add an array and I'm going to make a bunch of them going in the Y direction. You know, before they're curved, imagine it was flat. How far would it have to be? And then we'll curve it. So I'm going to come over to modifier array and I'm going to do this in the Y direction. And I would think I want one. All right. And I'm going to get rid of the X. Uh, the one thing that I didn't do yet, and I can turn off the array if I want. I'm going to add a bevel to these and I'm going to make it two and I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'm going to apply that. Now, now you can see a little bit of distance. You could try a, a different distance. If you didn't like that, you could go for more, but I'm going to go for that for now. And I'm going to go for say eight of these, uh, 10 for the moment. Now we're going to have to do some manipulation to this. You'll see. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut that, but I've still got the array, I'm not applying it. I'm going to go add modifier, curve, and here the object that we're going to follow, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to choose the curve. I'm also going to switch to the Y and I get to get this fan like thing. I'm starting to get a curve, but it's in the wrong orientation for these. So watch this. I'm going to, I'm still got my object selected. I'm going to go back into edit mode and it goes weird like that. Okay. Select that that one that is the basis of the array and go rotate Y 90. All right, deselect. Now back to object mode and you get this. Now, the lines that you will see here are based on whether or not you had enough subdivisions in the original plane. I could have subdivided it more so that it bent better. Um, with smoothing, it's not too bad, so I'm gonna leave it. Otherwise, you know, you do it and you do it until you get what you want. I'm gonna go into side view, 
and I just want to make sure I know yeah it's the Y all right side view the Y arrow will turn this around the curve okay because we're in the Y and I'm gonna pull it to there but I may need more segments I want to bring back everything and the Z arrow here is what will slide it no sorry make sure you're selected the right thing here is what will slide it along so I'm gonna slide it to like there we'll scale it in, in, in a bit that may just be fine I may have hit it on the first one I think it's okay so I think I'm gonna leave it like that in other words I don't need to add more segments to this so I've got that there and I think what I'm gonna do now is accept that and then I'll lengthen it in the X so I am going to go apply to the array and apply for the curve I don't need that curve anymore but it's not doing anything so who cares scale in the X SX just pull it to there there now we made these quite big and uh, you know I made this quite thin and so that's that's fine uh, I, you know uh, it's a design thing you decide if you like it like that or not but I'll have to keep with that theme of uh, you'll see what I mean later okay so far so good now it's time to do the sides or I'm not joining anything right now by the way it's debatable if I hide this uh, well maybe I will get rid of that just to, just to be to clean things up once I put the wood paneling on the side it's debatable if I need the original cylinder or not um, yeah well whatever I'm just gonna unhide that so we can look at this stuff Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's come into oops, make sure we're on the cylinder itself. Here, how about we hide that <laughs> for now? Uh, let's go into edit mode of the cylinder and select this face here and go shift S cursor to select it. That's gonna bring the 3D cursor right to here. So when I bring in an object, it's gonna show up right at that spot. Alright, so now with my 3D cursor there, I'm gonna go shift A and I'm going to bring in a plane again. But I'm going to rotate this in the Y. Rotate 90. R, Y, 90. So that it's in that orientation. I'll bring it out a little bit as well. And I'm going to make another piece of wood. It doesn't have to be the same as that, that wood though. Scale this in the Z. Let's look at the side view. And I want about three of these. Uh, from you know there. And another one. And another one. So I'm going to scale in the Z a little bit more. And uh, I need it to make sure it stretches all the way across. And then uh, it's going to be too wide up here, but I'll deal with that in a bit. So there's the start of our piece. So let's uh, go into edit mode, make sure it's selected, E to extrude, and we'll pull it out a little bit. And doesn't, you know, similar to the thickness of that. Okay, let's go back into object mode and let's go control A, apply rotation and scale. Because we scaled this in object mode before, so let's just do that. And then let's add the bevel modifier, same uh, parameters, and just apply. Okay, so now let's push this in roughly into place. And we can still adjust the uh, thickness of that. Uh, let's go ahead and add an array again, but this time in the Z direction. So let's set that to zero and let's set this to one or minus one. All right, let's go minus one and let's try three. And no, it looks like it's gonna have to be. Now what I'll do is I'll make these a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna go scale Z and I'm gonna pull down so that it fits. I'll do a little bit more. The alternative is to make them thinner and have more pieces, but I think that's gonna be all right. Let me bring back that so that the wood is different on the, you know, here and here, although not that much different. Okay. <clears throat> so now, <clears throat> how do I want to do this? I want to mirror it and then modify it at the same time. I'll do it one at a time. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And I'm gonna select that and go inside view. It's all gonna be, I can even move origin geometry. It'll be right in the middle. It's all one big piece now. Let's go into edit mode of that. Okay, so it's all one piece. Wireframe, and I like to work in vertex. Okay, so vertex right there. And in vertex, I'm gonna box select these. And I'm gonna scale them in the Y until they're within this curved region. Scale in the Y. It's gonna look a little ugly at first. And I'll make my way down. Scale these in the Y. And these ones are already there and I could stop there. Let's just have a look at what that would look like. As you can see, the wood is now constrained underneath there. All right. Now what I can do is I'm, I want this on the other side as well, as long as I'm happy about the position. And I, th I think it's fine. All right. So what I need to do is um, make sure that if I want to mirror this over, I have to have an exact center point to mirror it over. And I think these are pretty good, but really uh, these things are probably better. If I set origin to geometry right in the middle, okay, this is, this is quite symmetrical. So I'm going to select that and go shift S cursor to select it. Now I can select my wood panels and I can go mirror. And the mirror object is this stuff and in the X direction and I've got it over on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. So that's done. I set origin of geometry of those as well. All right, so we're building this up. All righty, um, that's that so far. So let's go to the diagram. All right, there's a piece in the middle and then there's this thing and then there's a, a, a copy. So basically what I think I would do is I would um, go into uh, edit mode of this and I would select a piece and go control L and that will select all the linked parts of that. Shift D and in front view, now that I've copied it, just move it over. It might be off a little bit, but it's gonna be fine. You come back to object mode and have a look at that. And that one sticks up quite a bit more than in my in my previous diagram. Maybe a bit too much, but we're gonna go with it now. All right, just a design element, and maybe it's personal taste, maybe I'll like it more. Now, we're not carving into this thing. All right, so I don't need a hole in this, but what I do need to do is I need to, you know, bevel it a, a little bit. And well, that's what I'm gonna do now. So I am gonna select it, go Control A, rotation and scale, just in case. And I'm going to think about if I just wanna add the typical beveler. Chicken up to two, scale this back a little bit. You can try smoothing. And I think for our purposes, that's gonna be good enough. Um, maybe I want this smaller. I'm gonna hold shift while I scale in. And the same for this side, scale X and I hold shift as I pull in. Just so it's not as, as crazy. That's probably okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to shift D and I'm going to copy this and pull it down. I'm not set on the height of this yet. I'm not absolutely certain about that, but I know I need to make a box-like structure. Well, I don't really need the box-like structure. What I need is the paneling and the legs, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll think about that. So I'm going to go ahead and make the legs. So with this selected, because it is relatively symmetrical and all, I'm just going to go cursor to select it, so shift A and bring in a cube. Let's scale this down, pull it out, and I want to look on the bottom, 7 is the top, control 7 is the bottom. I'm going to bring this roughly into position of where I would want uh, this, kind of like making a table leg. Alright, so I want them underneath there with a bit of a lip. like that and I'm gonna grab this bottom face and pull it down now I don't know how much this part is a little bit um, 
uncertain trial and error. And we're going to do this part here, and then we'll make those other ones. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put an edge loop in there, Control R. I'm going to pull it down to, I don't know, maybe about there. Then in face selection, I'm going to shift and click on this edge and to get the whole row of polys. And I'm going to expand these. So I'm going to go E to extrude, scale, but shift Z, not in the Z. And I'm going to pull this out a nice amount like that. All right. Now I want to go into object mode and go Control A, rotation and scale. I want to bevel these now. And I'm going to do it by hand. I mean, I don't have to, but I don't know. I'm going to. Am I, am I going to do it by hand? Or am I just going to try this? Maybe I'm just going to do it like that. Those might be a little bit big too. How about we scale shift Z, make them a little bit smaller. And control 7 just to look at the positioning. I think the positioning is okay. I think we're going to go with that. selected right so and I don't need to do anything with that right now okay let's start mirroring this thing around so um, let's select it and let's hit mirror with respect to this and that's gonna put one down there in the X and we should be able to put them in the Y as well and they should be all nicely placed okay hit apply look at it in front view I'm going to select a piece of this and control L and I'm going to select a piece of this one and control L and look in the front because I'm going to shift D and copy these and bring them into position in the middle and I'm looking at the blue line down here and the arrow when I let it go and the 3D cursor to try and get it in the center and I suppose the grid would help it doesn't have to be exactly bang on and it's also debatable whether you want these the exact same size as the other ones for the moment I am gonna leave them the same size and we will we'll see all right uh, with that done um, I think I'm going to bring in another cube to do this part I'm gonna make sure that is cursor to selected I'm gonna shift a and bring in a cube instead of you know extruding this piece down I'll scale this in the X and this is going to form the inside and so I'm looking at these lines I'm going to be putting wood there so I don't think I want it that close and I do want it relatively equal in fact like that let's that, that's too long though so let's uh, select the bottom and let's bring it up to um, to close to there and then I'll do a lip thing doesn't really matter right now so I can just leave it there for now I'm gonna bevel it or do anything with it I just want that part set up now I'm gonna want to put a lock on this so about these things there's a beveler on it so if I go into edit mode I scale this in the Z I think I want them bigger. Let's see that. For both of them, I can copy them. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to get rid of that one. Pull this one down a bit. Shift D. Just copy another one up. I want this tiny gap so it looks, you know, like that. I think that's going to make it easier to put a lock on it. And I want this bottom part a little stubby, a little shorter. I may actually be shrinking this down as well, so you'll see that in a bit. All right, control S. Okay, now I think I'm going to try to take the side ones. So here's what I would do: I'm going to select all three of those panels that made up this, and go Control L, so I get everything linked. But they're shrunken in, but I can undo that. I hope. Let's try this. 
Shift D and P to make them a new object. So if I select somewhere here, let me make sure I got just them. Yeah, I got just them. Origin of geometry. All right, and that's what they look like. I'm going to move these down and in. And they work pretty well, don't they? Um, how far down? That is the question. How far down to the feet? Well, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be putting something that blocks them anyhow. So I'm going to put them down to. I'm going to put them down to here. And I'm going to look in the side three. <clears throat> and I'm going to go into edit mode and wireframe. And I see I got just a little bit of work. So in vertex, I'm going to box select here. I'm going to scale in the Y outwards this time. Like that. I could probably leave it like that, couldn't I? Let's see if that's. Yeah, I could. And there they are. And I can still move those. Let's go ahead and mirror this across, but let's use the box as the mirror object. So it's right on the other side of the box. Shift S, cursor to select it. Select those. Mirror. Mirror object is the box in the X. And that's great. Now, <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and apply that. I can still move these, therefore, up and down, even in and out if I wanted to. In fact, that's what I want to do. I want to take this and I want to set origin to geometry so it's right in the middle. <clears throat> I'm going to go Shift D, Rotate Z 90. And then they're there in a really weird position. Well, that's okay because I'm going to go into edit mode, select them, and I'm not sure if I have to be an individual origin. Let's try this. I'm going to try to pull them into the surface, scale in the Y, ah, just like that. Okay. And I'm going to be over here, scale in the Y. I want them inside, uh, around there. I'm looking at this stuff here, and I'm trying to compare it to this stuff. I mean, this stuff, this can be um, arranged or changed anyhow. Let's go ahead and look in the front view. Um, gee, I could do it in wireframe. I'm in this object. Okay, I'm going to pull these points out to here and these points out to there. So let's go into vertex, box select. I can do both of them. Scale in the X, pull them out. Geez, I could have done all of them. But they're going to come with different, different amounts. Scale in the X. Yeah. Never mind. I'm going to do these two. Scale in the X. And let's do these ones down here. Scale in the X. And if you think it looks messy and you don't like it, you could always box select this side and line them all up in the X. So you go scale X zero, you know, that kind of thing. You don't need the bevel on the side. You know, this would affect the bevel. So you could do that. Did I do both sides like that? All right, let's have a look at that. <coughs> Alrighty, I think that's pretty good. So here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna take this piece, Shift D, and bring it down, and we are going to get go into edit mode. We're gonna select it, and we're gonna scale in the X like that. Scale in the Y like that. Scale in the Z like. That maybe back in object mode and bring her down so it cuts into those. How about that? Just reusing the pieces. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Let's see where we're at. Okay, I think we're going to select everything. And we're going to see if we like scale in the Z. A little bit of this. I'm going to see if we like that. I like it better. Short and stubby and kind of cute looking. Alrighty, so we need to put some bolts in. Let's do that. Let's select this. Now, how do I want to do this? I want to get more serious about this. Alright. Gee, let's select this face. 
Shift S, cursor to select it. By the way, is that the front? Yeah, it is. All right, cursor, my 3D cursor is right there. So Shift A, mesh, circle, rotate X90, and scale. Pull along, front view, let's get the sizing down. All right, and let's line it up so that it's lined up with this piece here, scale. Okay, just like that, nice and big. I'll put one there and there, and I'll put them on the other side, so. Let's zoom in with the period key. All right, go into edit mode, make sure it's selected, have to make a face, E to extrude, pull it out, Control B, pull back, and roll your mouse up a few times to blow some polys and round it out. All right, I think that might stick out a little bit too much. Let's squash it, scale it in the Y, and squish it down and smooth it, and that's all you need. You could put other details if you want, but I don't think it's the same. Oh yeah, is that right? No, is, it, is it all right? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, fine. Um, let's mirror this around. Uh, let's select this thing, this this block here. Shift S, cursor to selected, and let's take this and mirror it with respect to this guy in the X. And let's try mirroring it in the Y as well. Put in the front and back. And let's just go apply for now. Origin of geometry. And let's just shift D and pull this down. And we're going to put them there as well. Uh, right? Now, do I need this? No, I'm going to put the lock in the middle. So I need them on the sides as well. So I'll just go ahead and I think I'll do the easy way. I'm just going to go in edit mode and I'm going to select a piece of it and control L, shift D, P to make it a new object, come back out, grab that object, origin geometry. All right, and I'll, I'll move it over here a little bit and then I'll um, bring it out. Uh, rotate Z90 and did I go the right way? I did I'll push it against the surface. And then we'll look at side and side view and put it there. Yeah, is that okay? I think it's probably supposed to be a similar distance from that to there and that to there. I don't know if I'm doing that or I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I guess, that much. All right, let's. Uh, this is still selected, right? It has a mirror object, so I'm going to mirror it in the, uh, in the Y with respect to that in the Y. Uh, and we could try in the X and see if we get them. <laughs> we got them. Uh, okay. And Shift D to bring them down there as well. And make sure we're saving. Mm, I may be crashing here. Darn it. No, maybe not. I'm darn well going to make sure I've saved. Mm, all right. Do I have all those in the right spots? I got those, those, those. Cool. All right, let's find the front of this. And I just want to make a decision about the thickness of these. Yeah, I guess they're all right. OK. Um, I'm going to go and select that face again, which is already selected. Shift S, cursor to select it. Bring the 3D cursor back right to the middle of this face instead of the, the whole thing. Shift A, mesh. Scale this down, and then it's just a matter of taste to how big you want that lock to be. Um, I want it, you know, stretching down something like that and over this, a little bit smaller than that. Um, and I'll scale the I'm scaling a lot in object mode right now. I want it the same. So I'm going to do it like that. I kind of want it longer. What am I doing? Scale it Z. All right, well, anyways, it is personal taste. So uh, because I've manipulated a lot in object mode, I'm going to do rotation and scale. And how do I want to do this? I want to do it with that kind of bevel? I'm just try to be simple. I want to bevel it myself. I think I want to bevel it myself. 
So the way I would do this is an edge selection. I would grab all of these edges here. All right, and go Control B, pull back, and roll roll my mouse up to get some edges like that. And grab all Shift Alt and click that edge, and Control B and pull back and add some edges. And I'm not going to bevel the back side of this. I'm just going to do that. Okay, now I'm going to select that object, Shift S, Cursor, Select, because I'm going to make the keyhole, or my version of the keyhole. All right. Um, let me just think for a second about if I'm liking this. Yeah, it's fine. It's a cartoon piece. Okay, Shift A, bring in a circle. Rotate X90. Scale it down. Bring it forward so you can see it. And look at it. Bring it up. And I want it to be relatively big for you know some kind of magical key. Okay. All right. So there it is. It's all centered. Edit mode and vertex. And I'm going to zoom in. This is the very bottom vertex. So I want that one and that one and the other one. So that one, that one, and that one. I'm going to pull these down like that. Am I? No, I'm not. I'm going to E to extrude them down <laughs> like that. And then I'm going to scale them in the X. That's what I wanted. Sorry about that. Okay, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to select that edge, this edge, and this edge. And I am going to dissolve those edges. I'm going to arm deleting those edges. I didn't think I'm deleting those edges. And that's what I want. Shift Alt and click the whole thing. I have to make a face. E to extrude. Give it some depth. Select it all, control N, not that, control N, make sure all the polys are facing the right way. Uh, you can even select it all and make sure there are no doubles or anything. All right, control A, rotation and scale. This guy, control A, rotation and scale. Make sure there's no doubles, no doubles. Everything's cool. All right, we're gonna do a Boolean now. Now, Ngons, uh, this is not nice practice, but I'm doing it anyhow. This piece is not gonna be animated. It's not gonna be in any special game engine. It's gonna sit there. Um, you could certainly do this and have it sitting in the background of a scene and it's not gonna cause a problem. But some people don't like Ngons and I understand that. And let's push that in and we're gonna try a Boolean. So I'm selecting the lock area and I'm gonna go Boolean difference and the object is going to be the key looks like it worked so I'm going to hit apply I'm going to take this and I'm going to delete it a decent enough distance down so that's going to be good enough so I don't need that piece I'm now going to go in and in edge selection I'm going to shift alt and click until I select the whole edge now I'm just going to bevel the outer edge for now and we're going to see if I want to bevel this inner edge so I'm going to go control B and I'm going to pull away and I'm going to go one, two, three. All right. And I'm going to do that. Boy, that's a big key for such a small chest. All right. Now, if I select this and I add smoothing, I'm going to get some issues. And what I probably would do about that is I would go into edit mode and I would select this interface and go E to extrude and select these faces on the surface E. Deselect and come back out and have a look at that. That might give me a problem here for that. So I'm going to be back out of that. And I'm going to try another tech, another workaround. I'm going to try. I'm going to try this. May arrive at the same thing. Select that. Come on up to here, and I'll try shading. Did I hit that smooth? That edge is all right, and not bad. You know, from for render, and it's not going to show up in a render anyhow. Uh, and I'm going to do a similar thing on the inside. 
I'm just going to sh uh, shift alt and click that edge. Control plus up to about the surface, but I don't want to shade that. And I'm going to shade. All right, and that's good enough. Okay, well, that's enough for me. Uh, do I want to bevel the back? Do I want to push back? Nah, that's good enough, right? It's a big lock. <laughs> All right, what are we missing? Oh yeah, we need some little bolts on there, so let's do that. Let's uh, go into edit mode of this. Shift L, Shift D, T to make a new object out of that. So I got it. Origin of geometry, and let's move this over here. One, and position it, and we'll make it smaller. Nice and small, but visible, hopefully, still. It's just a little bit of detail. Let's go back to one. And I think I'm just going to copy this stuff over. Two of them. Just make sure they're in. Okay, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and join these. Good. Okay, cool. I like that. Um, that thing, I suppose. If you wanted something like that. Shift S, cursor to select it. Side view. Shift A, and we'll bring in a cube. And we'll scale it down. Pull it out. All right, so it's just a cube, eh? Mm -hmm. I might be building this uh, backwards. On perp, you know, and then uh, yeah, let's uh, scale this in the Y again. Let's put two edge loops like that, and then grab these faces here. E to extrude, pull them out like that, and then grab these faces on the sides. E to extrude. Scale in the Y. I don't know if I said extrude or not. Roughly the same distance. Grab these guys. E to extrude. Pull them out. And then we'll do these ones. E to extrude and scale in the Y. Yeah. Something like that, anyhow. Something like that. Let's rotate this back. Rotate Y 180. Take this and rotation and scale. Ah, notice the color change, all right? So my polys have flipped. So go into edit mode, select it all, control N, and that will recalculate them, no problem. I can now add the bevel modifier and tame it a little bit. Do something like that. Try smoothing, see if you like it. I don't really like smoothing on that. That's gonna look okay. Uh, is that too big though? I mean, what happens if I just globally scale it like that? And push it in. What's the size like on that one? Oh, is it? It's on the bottom one, isn't it? Yeah, it's on the bottom one. It's on this one. I guess it's okay. So let's go ahead and take uh, one of these again. Control L, Shift D, P. There it is. Origin of geometry. Let's bring it over here and bring it out. Let me zoom into that. Let's 
I'll get it as big as I can so that I, it's a reasonable detail to have. scale this in the axis. I just want it to stick out a bit more. It's so small it's kind of dead. Well, so are those ones, but all right, I'm just gonna copy it. I'm not gonna mirror. I'm just gonna copy it over, but I'll look a little bit more. Ah, that's that's fine. I'm gonna apply that bevel and take these and join them. I don't know how you get your hand in that to carry with it. It's just it's a different design. It looks good on all these curves and stuff. All right, so let's uh, mirror shift S cursor selected because this is symmetrical. Let's select that and go mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. That and it's done, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Let's, see, let's apply that. Okay, so I haven't really joined anything yet. Uh, oh, by the way, we could uh, just add a plane down down below. You know, it's like pretend grass or something. It's like that. <clears throat> All right, so um, give me a second. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to get some my colors organized. <laughs> remember, try to remember the hex codes for them. And then we'll, we'll, I'll just show you how I would quickly color this and render it. And, and I, I just check and make sure we're okay. I haven't missed anything. And I think that's, I think that's the model. All right. Well, let's um, select the plane and come over to the materials, new, and add green kind of color for some grass. And down in settings down here, hopefully my picture's not in the way. Just viewport color. You click on the color and use the eyedropper and click on that. And by the way, for the to view, you have to turn off the matte cap. You can leave the ambient occlusion, which I'm going to do, so you get that kind of thing. All right. Uh, so now um, that would be like the grass. Let's also make a material new, um, and I'll go in the hex. Uh, E77 C39 really doesn't matter. Just any orange would do to make sort of a wood color viewport. The eyedropper, select that. And I'm going to make this wood that color there. So I'm going to select it. Let's see if I can just grab it. There we go. And just grab it. So all the wood stuff, I'm making that material. And I guess that's it right there. And this stuff looks almost okay as, as metal, just the default uh, material as it is. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a black one though. Okay, I'm just going to drag this down to near the bottom. And viewpoint co viewport color. And for that, I'm going to select uh, bolts. These ones are joined, so I go into edit mode and I select a piece of each of them. Control L, and then uh, with the block, ah, let's get these going here. With, uh, oh geez, maybe I do have to make the default material. Okay, so I will. I'll just pull it down here and, uh, oops, like that. And in viewport, I'll grab that and that'll be like my silver color. Fine, fair enough. I'll sign that. Now I can go back and select these pieces. Control L and on the block assign and I should have it like that. And I guess this stuff I'm gonna have to set to this material, which is fine. Uh did I want those that color? I think I did. Gotta do the other handle. Okay, so that's gonna be this color. Right? Assign, and then I'll 
take this piece and that piece. Control L, select the black and assign. And come on out. I'll get that so far. And what am I doing with this thing? I know I'm doing the bolts is black, but the whole thing is silver and just black inside. Okay, fair enough. Easy then. Uh, I'm gonna select that. And uh, if I just do the whole thing, it turns it all black, which might be cool actually, but I'm not gonna do that. I don't think. Sign that. We'll take this and we'll put it on black and assign, and then we'll try to get the bolts. Shift and click on these. Sometimes it's hard to find a piece. Control L, click on black, assign. They're black. Uh, do I have everything colored? That's. Oh, did I lose color on that one? What the heck happened there? Ah, you're gonna make me go back in again, are you? I think we did it. I think we did uh, a very close version of uh, what we needed to do. Let's bring that up, hit the camera. We get that. All right, well, let's compare that. Pretty close. Pretty close. I might like this one better. Anyways, hope you like that. Thanks for watching.